Welcome to Wreaths Across America Norton. My name is Jim Riley, and I'm a member of the Knights of Columbus here at St. Mary's 11690. I'm here to welcome you to our national ceremony for Wreaths Across America. Would you please join me in starting our ceremony today with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance Now, we would like to have Lauren, I'd like to invite Lauren Rossi to come forward and sing our national anthem for us. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleam whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Please join me in a moment of silence to remember the fallen, the prisoners of war, the missing in action, and to honor those who have served and are serving in this great nation's armed services. Thank you all for joining us here today. Right now, at this moment, across the country, more than 1,700 memorial sites like this one, we are gathering as one nation to remember, to honor, and to teach. We are all proud to be Americans that live in a free society made up of many people from many walks of life. The freedoms we enjoy today have not come without a price. Lying here before us and in cemeteries throughout this nation are men and women who gave their lives so that we can live in freedom and without fear. We can worship as we see fit. We can raise our children to believe as we do. We can travel from one end of this great nation to the other and not have to ask permission to go. We are free to vote for whom we feel we should be in government office, and no, no explanation needed. We have the right to succeed, and we have the right to fail at whatever endeavor we wish to pursue. At this point, I would like to invite uh, Bernie Hinckley to come up and to say a prayer. Thank you, Jim. Let us be in a moment of prayer to honor the men, the women who are no longer here, for those who are serving and those who will heed the call to serve in the future. So let us pray. Creating God, we come before you on this day to pause, to lift up, and to remember those men and women who gave their lives in service 
for the men and women who have served in our armed forces. As we come to honor them with these wreaths, remind us that the circle has no end and no beginning as your love for us begins and never ends. So we pray that your love may soothe those who are hurt, those who are grieved. May you heal the wounds of those veterans who survived unimaginable battles, skirmishes, we pray for their healing in body and spirit and in mind. And may we honor their sacrifices by the way we treat one another, especially in this holiday season where you have come to us to reveal light, love, hope, and joy. So in your name we pray this day and forevermore. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Hinckley. The United States of America was founded on the ideals of freedom, justice, and equality. Our nation stands as a shining beacon of liberty and freedom to the world. We thank those who gave their lives to keep us free, and we shall not forget you. We shall remember. Today, many of you here are veterans of war and conflicts. Those wars and conflicts that America has had to fight to perfect, protect the innocent and the oppressed. This nation has always been the first to stand up for the freedoms of people from around the world. Many of you here today have answered the call and served your country well. We are here today to say thank you and we are honored to know you. There are many men and women serving today in all branches of the military, here at home and in places far away that most of us have never even heard of. These men and women are part of the best trained, best equipped force in the world. We honor them and their families for the sacrifices that they make each day and to keep our country safe from terrorism, from hatred, and from injustice. Quoting our 40th President of the United States, Ronald Reagan, quote, Freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it to our children in the bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, and handed on to them to do the same. Or one day, we will spend our sunset years telling our children and our grandchildren what it once was like in the United States where men were free." End quote. Today we show a united front of gratitude and respect across the United States as we remember the fallen, as we honor those who have served, and we teach our children the value of freedom. At this point, I'd like to invite Estelle Flett, our veteran service officer, to come forward for our wreath laying ceremony. At this time, we'll recognize the different branches of the military to include the Merchant Marines and our POW MIAs. St. Mary's Knights of Columbus will escort the laying of each wreath. Now, Carl Petro, Army veteran will lay a remembrance wreath in memory of those who served and are serving in the United States Army. Now, Tom DeLuca, Marine veteran, will lay a remembrance wreath in memory of those who served and are serving in the United States Marine Corps.
Now, Paul Romanelli, Navy veteran, will lay a remembrance wreath in memory of those who served and are serving in the United States Navy. Now, Ray Jackson, Air Force veteran, will lay a remembrance wreath in memory of those who served and are serving in the United States Air Force. Now, Daxton Tarantino, son of Coast Guard veteran Lee Tarantino, will lay a remembrance wreath in memory of those who served and are serving in the United States Coast Guard. Bill Wilson, Navy veteran, will lay a remembrance wreath in memory of those who served and are serving in the United States Merchant Marines. Gary Cameron, Marine veteran, will lay a remembrance wreath in honor, in honor of the 93,129 United States servicemen from all branches of the service whose last known status was either prisoners of war or missing in action. These individuals have never returned to their families and homes. We shall not forget you. We encourage every volunteer here today who places a wreath on a veteran's grave to say that veteran's name. Say it aloud. Take a moment to thank them for their service to our country. It's, it's a small act that goes a long way towards keeping the memory of our veterans alive. Remember, we are not here today to decorate graves. We are here to remember not their deaths, but their lives. Each wreath is a gift of appreciation from a grateful nation. These live balsam wreaths symbolize our honor to those who have served and are serving in the armed forces of our great nation and to their families who endure sacrifices every day on our behalf. 
to our children. We want you to understand the freedoms you enjoy today have not been free, but they have come with a cost that someday you yourself may have to pay. As a nation standing together, we can defeat terrorism, hatred, and injustice. Thanks to our veterans, we have the freedom to do just that. Today we have a couple of dignitaries uh, here with us, so I invite Senator Paul Feeney and Representative Stephen Howard and Representative Jay Barris, if you'd like to come forward and say a few words. Good afternoon. It's an honor for the three of us to be here this afternoon to uh, remember, teach, and honor our veterans and those who did not return, whether they are POWs or whether they uh, expired inspired in, in action. Uh, there is a quote that I tend to read uh, by George Washington, and if you'll uh, indulge me, let me just pull it out here. Thank you. George Washington, back at the beginning of our country, said, the willingness with which our young people are likely to serve in any war, no matter how justified, shall be directly proportional to how they perceive the veterans of earlier wars were treated and appreciated by their nation. Well, we have such a crowd here, and it fills my heart that we are all appreciating the sacrifice our veterans made on behalf of us. So thank you for having me here, and I wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you, Representative, and good afternoon. Looks like the rain gods have... Uh freed us up a little bit. Congratulations to our present veterans and certainly thank you to those that passed. Uh, thank you to the town of Norton and I'm amazed with the turnout and um, thank you to the folks that uh, came up with this idea to recognize those who have served and um, it's wonderful to see Norton participate. So again, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year and uh, thank you for all being here. We are all one. God bless America. Thank you, Representative. Good afternoon, everybody. What an amazing turnout on an incredible day. What an honor to be here, all of us together, standing here on solemn ground in an effort that's so much bigger than ourselves individually, with over 1,600 locations right now across this country doing the same exact thing. And we join with them here in Norton, this wonderful community who has been blessed from generation to generation to have men and women among us, to leave the comforts of their community and the loving embrace of their families, to go to lands unknown or to serve in peacetime, to fight for those families and to protect those communities. We have been blessed to have so many among us who have answered that call. But today is a day to remember for each of us that it doesn't have to be Memorial Day for us to remember or Veterans Day for us to honor but the third part about what we are doing today, we remember, we honor, and we teach. So to the young people that are here, first off, thank you to the families for bringing so many young people. Thank you for being here and understanding, understanding that what we have today, that what we enjoy today was only made possible, and it's still only made possible, by those men and women that answer the call. So as we go out today and lay these wreaths, and as I think was so aptly mentioned, we say the names of each of the people who lay beneath us when we lay those wreaths. And we don't only remember, we don't only honor, we teach the next generation how important their sacrifice truly, truly is. May God continue to bless you. May God bless the community of Norton. May God bless the United States of America. Thank you. like to now introduce Pat Tarantino. Pat is really the, uh, the motivator behind this. Um, when Pat mentioned to me that she had gone down to Bourne last year to place a wreath on her husband's uh, grave, what really motivated me is all the graves that were down there that were covered with wreaths. But what really got me involved is when she turned around 
there were 77,000 uh, graves that did not have wreaths. So let me introduce you to Pat Tarantino. I'm, I'm truly overwhelmed by the response this town has given us and by showing up today even though it looked like monsoon <laughs> earlier this morning. So um, I just want to briefly thank everyone, the American Legion, VFW, the Knights of Columbus, and their Honor Guard, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, St. Mary's Parish, all the businesses in town who made donations or provided us with materials. Norton High School, for their wood shop. They make these lovely wreath stands. And all the individuals who donated money and time. Some, some, as they say, everyone plays a part. Um, and again, we're here. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> We're all here to remember, honor, and teach. And our representatives and senator that came today, thank you very much. We raised our goal. Our goal was to raise 650 wreaths. We not only met that goal, but we went 200 wreaths over that. And those were sent directly to Bourne to help some of those 77,000 that did not have wreaths. So thank you. You should all be proud. Also, please remember on January 11th, Reefs Across America is rather strict about how long these wreaths can be down. They don't want them being blown all over the place and making a mess. So on January 11th, we're going to be gathering to pick them up. And I'm sure some of the, I think the hockey team at school and those want to come, bring sticks, bring bats, bring brooms, because these wreaths will freeze to the ground and they will knock them out and pick them up and we'll dispose of them in a proper way. Again, two, you're all invited to lay wreaths here. We also have wreaths that are already at the center cemetery. So when we're done here, any of you that wish can go there. And we also have wreaths at the Timothy Plain. And we have another, so it's approximately another 400 wreaths to place today, other than what's here. So please follow the trail to all cemeteries and let's get them filled. And again, you grab a wreath, you go to the grave that has a flag and the bronze holder on it. If you cannot read the name on the stone, they're etched in that bronze holder. So you say their name out loud, we thank them for your service, and we tell them they're not forgotten. And thank you all for coming. If anyone has a wreath or a loved one in the cemetery and they want to lay it specifically, you can come forward now and grab Oh no, wait, 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 we have music. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait. Wait, wait, don't tell Any more logistics before we go to music? <laughs> that sounds good. All right. And if you have any questions, please come forward and, and ask us. We're happy to answer. So our ceremony is almost over. We would like to conclude <coughs> with Officer Dennett playing Amazing Grace. And then we would like to finish with taps.
you for your service. George Carding, we remember you. We will not forget you. Thank you for your service. Deborah Leverlap. Thank you. Thank you. James B. Malloy. Thank you.